Written by Dr. Yasim Ayaviv. Corporate Basics of Software Model The collaborative development mode of free software is often referred to as the marketplace model. It is based on the distribution and communication potential offered by the internet and the pooling of resources it allows. It relies on the principle of availability of source codes to allow any developer to make any changes or improvements that may seem beneficial to him. But these changes are of interest on a collective level only if their authors in turn make them public. So, they can eventually be integrated into the overall structure. There is an effective operation of a continuous innovation mode based on a gift, counter-gift logic. Opportunistic behaviors and features build the developer's community. To avoid this trap, which is a public domain software trap, enter the copyright field without wording. But it was necessary to enter from a very different position, even as opposed to proprietary copyright. From these concerns grew the principles established by the Free Software Foundation. These are the principles of free use and free replacement of code, subject to the transmission of its content to the organization for verification and tagging purposes. Therefore, when it comes to Linux, the final decision on whether to integrate the changes or not rests with those driving the industry regarding the Linux project. In fact, the need for the principles of this order arose in 1983 when the first collective GNU2 development project was created. The need to provide a legal framework that could guarantee respect for the principles of cooperative development gave rise to the GPL or GNU General. The basic principle is that any program that combines GPL lines of code must also be available under the GPL license, since the associated code is free. Thus, authors do not give up their rights, but the sole monopoly rent that those rights would allow in a copyright regime. Thus, the software remains the property of its creators. They authorize anyone to use them, provided that any new versions are also freely circulating. Changes, improvements, additions, etc. This does not explain the possible commercialization of the programs. Therefore, it does not limit the framework of the freeware to the non-commercial domain. Better still, some companies have based their development strategies on the principles of collaborative development and free access to source code. So, they extended the conceptual framework of free software to an area often referred to as OSS, open source software. This expansion may be related to the development, publication, and distribution of free software such as the American company, Software. It leads to the opening of sources of certain products on behalf of traditional software companies. Therefore, software can very well become free once it is maintained and paid for, as was done for its product, whose source code was distributed free of charge in 1998. The goal of this strategy is to mobilize large numbers of programmers on an important product to impose Microsoft as the de facto standard. It was also about trying to counteract it on its own ground. Its economic rationale is then to realize its gains over complementary products that can easily remain proprietary architectures. This inclusion of commercial activities in free space is the need to devise an extension of its legal framework beyond the very strict GNU-GPL license. From this arose a series of more hybrid licenses aimed at developing collaboration and reconciling private interests within OSS. The models are numerous and reflect a variety of specific situations and strategies that do not fit into any one universal regime. They correspond to various positions that relate copyright logic in various proportions and formats. Thus, two complementary licenses have been perfected in the unlocking process. NPL, Netscape Public License, and MPL, Mozilla Public License, which enables new developments to be integrated into their service without the need for coverage. Covering the development of new modules. Therefore, any changes to the source code should be published. However, it reserves the right to integrate proprietary modules and refrains from restricting its use in its own product range. Similarly, SCSL, Sun Community Source License, emerged to extend the communication protocol. In this way, the exclusivity of the certificate of conformity of any product intended for commercial use is reserved. Others have followed similar paths multiple variations combine the rights to use OSS or integrate it with proprietary software and their commercial and non-commercial uses. The overall aim is to promote the advancement of knowledge and the adoption of the standard, with a model of exclusivity on certain elements that guarantees a certain level of income. In short, it is to harmonize the model of free access to technology. 
Written by Dr. Yasim Ayavif, 